Good morning, Emmanuel. Welcome to Emmanuel Online this morning. Let's worship together. Washes the fear away. There is a peace that settles around us. It is your love that sets our hearts ablaze. There is a light that burns in the
today, that you would fill every home and every heart with your presence and your joy and your peace. And God, today as we worship and as we pray and as we share in the word, God, together, God, I pray that you would encourage us, Father, and Lord, speak to us and make us more and more like your son, Jesus, Lord, as a result of these these moments together. And so God, today, These are unusual times. These are odd days. But God, you are at work. And you are moving, Father. And you are supplying and you are meeting needs. And you are changing hearts and you are catching our attention. And so God, today, we praise you. And we want to declare, Father, together as the Emmanuel family, that we love you. We praise you. And God, now we're going to adore your son, Jesus Christ. So, Father, even as we sang just a moment ago, would you fill this place? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
Jeremiah chapter 33 God says this this is what the Lord says he who made the earth the Lord who formed it and established it the Lord is his name and he says call unto me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know during these chaotic times my friends call out to him you will see he is still doing great things
he is not here, for he is risen. Amen. You know what's amazing? Even this morning as we are worshiping together here in Honeytown, Maryland, we have friends all over the country that are joining us. We have uh, friends from Senatobia, Mississippi. So hello to James Albert Diane. I'm looking forward to you sending some banana pudding. will be a great thing today. We have friends down in Central and South Florida. We have friends in Dallas, Texas. We have friends watching in Boston, Massachusetts. And we even have those out in Southern California joining us. So it is amazing what God is doing through this time. Let's pray together. God. We ask that you bless this time together, Lord. Bless your word, Father. I thank you for the opportunity for us to come together and to worship together, even online. We pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, in times of, of chaos and crisis, it's really easy for us to lose our way, to, to get off track and just to get out of our groove. You know, let's face it, COVID-19 has probably affected us all in one way or the other. You might be struggling financially. Maybe you've lost some revenue or even worse, maybe you've lost your job. You might have found yourself struggling physically. I mean, you're staying home and binge watching like never before. Or maybe you're out doing yard work and you're just not ready for all of that labor. You might have realized that you began to struggle relationally as well. I mean, we are spending 24-7 with one another, and for some, that's pretty difficult. It's amazing to hear from the police department that even the, uh, the domestic calls are up. You might be struggling emotionally. You might be battling bouts of situational or reactive depression. You might be asking, well, what does that look like? You've got my attention. Well, well maybe you have developed recently that, that hopeless outlook. You're feeling senses of, of worthlessness and, and self-hate, maybe just an overwhelming sense of guilt. You're trying to figure out everything that's going on. You might be thinking, you know, this is my fault. If, if I would have finished my degree, if I had a better job, if I were in a different position, if I made a better choice several years ago, I, I wouldn't be in this situation. And maybe you're even thinking to yourself, this is my fault or what's the point? You might have realized that you're facing a loss of interest. Things that, that once you used to love to do, now you're not interested at all. Or maybe increased fatigue. You might be sleeping more than you ever have, or, or maybe you're sleeping less, battling insomnia. Maybe you're battling anxiety, that, that nervous feeling, that restlessness, that, that tense feeling. Maybe you're having a hard time uh, focusing. For men especially, a lot of us are dealing with increased irritability, and so we're, we're engaging in risky behavior or escape activities, or, or maybe going back to some of our old habits with substance abuse, or, or maybe even some misplaced anger. I've even been told that, that people are having strange dreams, more and more dreams now than ever before. No kidding, just last night, I had a dream that I was playing golf with my Uncle Norman. Well, Uncle Norman passed away years ago, and President Donald Trump. <laughs> and the course was terrible, and we were playing golf together, and, and President Trump leaned over to me and said, this course is terrible. And I said, I agree, sir. And he said, we should have played at one of my clubs. I said, you should have invited us. <laughs> Listen, it's not like me to play golf with the president's weird and unusual dreams. Mr. Biden, I'm expecting to meet you tonight. Listen, this is a strange and unusual time. We might be experiencing changes in appetite as well. Weight gain or weight loss. Boy, weight loss would be a nice thing, wouldn't it? Or maybe uncontrolled emotions. Those severe meat mood swings may be frequent in nature. And perhaps even self-harm or thoughts of suicide. But you know, many of us are also struggling spiritually. Uh, during this unusual time, a lot of us are, 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 are struggling, feeling like we are disconnected from God. My friends, I wanna let you know that you are not alone. These are all very normal struggles in times of crisis and chaos. And we're gonna see in Acts chapter six, seven, and eight today, an amazing truth that took place 2,000 years ago, but it is so real for us today. Let me set the scenes for you very quickly. 
In Acts chapter 6, 7, and 8, we, we find the first season of crisis and chaos for the early church. Now, don't forget, Jesus just uh, died, he was buried, and he rose from the dead, and then just a few weeks later, he ascended back into heaven. And now the early church begins to launch out, and they begin to experience both internal and external struggles. Internally, they began to struggle over widows, who was taking care of them, and, and one group felt like they were being shorted while the other group was being cared for. And externally, they began to experience persecution like never before. Matter of fact, Stephen was falsely accused of blasphemy, and he was literally stoned to death. Can you imagine being in a field or a parking lot and the crowd around you picking up stones and throwing them at you until you died? He died for his faith. And then we turn to Acts chapter 8. And as we open that incredible chapter, there is widespread chaos and crisis and fear and confusion in the early church. Let me read the first eight verses for you. Acts chapter 8, verses 1 through 8. Saul was one of the witnesses, and he agreed completely with the killing of Stephen. Now remember, Saul became the Apostle Paul. What an incredible story of conversion in Acts chapter 9. The Bible continues. A great wave of persecution began that day, sweeping over the church in Jerusalem, and all the believers except the apostles were scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria. Some devout men came and buried Stephen with great mourning. Notice, but, but Saul was going everywhere to destroy the church. We're going to come back to that in just a moment. He went from house to house, dragging out both men and women to throw them into prison. But, and that's the key, but the believers who were scattered preached the good news about Jesus wherever they went. Philip being one of them, one of the six that was chosen in Acts chapter 6, for example, went to the city of Samaria and told the people there about the Messiah. And crowds listened intently to Philip because they were eager to hear his message and to see the miraculous signs he did. Many evil spirits were cast out, screaming as they left their victims, the Bible says. And many who had been paralyzed or lame were healed. Can you imagine that glorious moment? And then this beautiful story concludes in verse 8. So there was great joy in that city. Let's talk about this this morning. Let's talk about how do we keep Christ in the middle of our chaos, in the middle of our crisis? How do we stay focused on Jesus no matter what we are facing even today? Let me suggest three things. Number one, see every obstacle as an opportunity. We need to begin to look at this season that we're experiencing a little bit differently. I want you to remember in verses 1 through 4, the Bible says, A great wave of persecution began that day, and all the believers except the apostles were scattered. Pay attention to that word. Through the region. Now, the word all there probably referred to the Greek speaking Jews. They were easily identifiable because of the way they spoke. And I want you to notice that when the persecution took place in Jerusalem, the church, the believers, just like you and me, were scattered throughout the region. They became almost like seeds. You know, some of you have been putting down fertilizers and, and grass seed in your yard. I saw some people planting their garden yesterday. Well, that's the idea. They were cast out in the region just like we cast out seed. The persecution that they experienced in the early church pushed them out of the city and throughout the region. Don't forget, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, this is what Jesus said. He said, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses. Now notice this. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, where you are now, and in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. What an incredible verse. The persecution that the early church experienced in Acts chapter 6, 7, and 8 was the platform for this mission, the mandate of Christ to be witnesses everywhere they went to be fulfilled. Listen, without the persecution of the early church, the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, would have been slow to spread. See, what some saw as an obstacle, God used as an opportunity to make his son Jesus known. Now, this is not to minimize the suffering and the pain that the believers experienced. 
Verse 2, very powerful verse. The Bible says, devout men buried Stephen and mourned deeply over him. Listen, people die. I mean, so we're not just overlooking this and saying, wow, praise God, he's doing these amazing things. This was tragic and desperate and scary times. Verse 3, the Bible says that Saul was going everywhere to destroy the church. He went from house to house, dragging out both men and women to throw them into prison. The, the word destroy there is used in the Old Testament of, of wild hogs or boars destroying fields. Matter of fact, in verse, uh, Psalm chapter 80, verse 13, the same word is used, and it simply says, boars from the forest ravaged the walls. This was a scary time. People were being heard, and, and the church was being destroyed, and it was a frightening time. I just heard this morning on the news before coming to church that, that Saturday, yesterday in Maryland was the deadliest day on record as we face this coronavirus with 74 of our own Marylanders dying yesterday. The pain was real in the early church. And the pain that we're suffering today is real. It's scary. It's frightening. And we do not want to overlook that. People are dying. People are getting sick. People are losing their jobs, and millions and millions are seeking unemployment. So how can we keep Christ before us in times of chaos and crisis? We need to begin to see every obstacle as an opportunity for God to work. We quote Romans 8.28 all the time here at Emmanuel Church. And we know, the Bible says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So what is God doing now? What are the opportunities that we see God doing right now? Well, we know that even today we are experiencing more family time than ever before. Many of us used to say, I wish we had more time with our family. Well, guess what? We now have more time with our family. Many of us said, man, I just wish life would slow down a bit. Well, guess what? Life has slowed down quite a bit. Every church, every home is now a church. I love the cartoon I saw this past week. God and the devil are talking, and, and the devil with a smile on his face and arms folded looks over to God and says, hey, I've closed every one of your churches. And God looks over at the devil and says, yep, and I've opened one in every home. <laughs> Listen, God is doing an amazing thing. He is reaching thousands and thousands of people online and through social media. Just our Easter service alone, we had over 3,000 people participate in our service on Easter. And we were hoping and praying for about 900 to be here on campus. Do you see what God is doing? We are having community outreach like never before. I mean, we are reaching out to the hospital, providing gift bags and encouragement bags. We are reaching out to the fire departments and the police departments and, and filling up the food pantry. And we have daily Bible studies and prayers. It is amazing what God is doing. Listen, my friends. In the time of crisis and chaos, it, it doesn't matter if it's a COVID-19, coronavirus, or any other life crisis. The key is to not focus on the obstacle, but to focus on the opportunity. See what God is doing. Let me share a second thought. And this is where many of us are falling short right now. Number two, stay focused on the Word of God. So, so how do we keep Christ before us during times of chaos and crisis? We, we need to stay focused on the Word of God. In verse 4, the Bible says this, But in contrast to the chaos and the crisis and the persecution, the believers who were scattered, notice what they did, preached the good news about Jesus wherever they went. Philip, for example, went to the city of Samaria, and he preached, and he shared. And the Bible says in verse 6, crowds listened intently to Philip because they were eager to hear his message. Isn't that awesome? Listen, COVID-19 has shattered our routines. I mean, you are not here on campus today, and to be very candid with you, I'm concerned about once the band is lifted, I I'm wondering how many people will come back. I'm concerned for those of you who have gotten out of the habit of coming to the church campus on Sunday morning. I'm wondering how many of you will continue the practice of staying home. I'm concerned about you and I'm praying for you even now. 
We're also not serving on a high level. We don't have all of our ministries and our missions up and running. I'm wondering desperately every single day if Mitchell's going to be back in our welcome center stacking donuts on Sunday morning. I sure hope that he does. Many of us, and this is what I worry mostly about, we're not maintaining the habit of prayer and daily Bible reading. The early church had the right idea during this time of crisis and chaos. They stayed focused on the word of God. The Bible says they shared it wherever they went. Isn't that great? They just continued to focus on the word of God. And as they went about their daily task, perhaps with a mask on, they continued to share the word of God. Let me encourage you to do a couple things. Number one, let me encourage you to read the word of God daily. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, consequently, Faith comes by hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. And so I want you to read it daily to stay focused on your faith during this time of crisis. Number two, I want you to meditate on the word of God. I want you to think about the word of God. Don't, don't just read it and forget about it. Leave it on the, on the coffee table, but begin to meditate and to think about the word of God. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, the word of God says this. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Always be talking about it. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. And I love this. And then you will be prosperous and successful. Meditate on the word of God. Here's another thing I want us to do. We need to obey the word of God. Listen, we can't just be hearers of the word of God. We've got to be doers of the word of God. The Bible says in Psalm 119 verses 1 and 2, joyful. Do you want joy in your life? Well, here it is. Joyful are people of integrity who follow the instructions of the Lord. Joyful are those who obey his laws and search for him with all their hearts. And so not only hearing the word of God and meditating on the word of God, but, but doing and practicing the word of God, obeying what it says. Finally, share it. The Bible says in Acts chapter 8 verse 6, that the crowds listened intently to Philip because they were eager to hear his message. Listen, my friends, I believe today in our society, in our culture, with all that we are facing now, people want to hear a word of encouragement. People want to hear a word of hope. People want to know that there is a God who loves them. And so you don't have to be obnoxious or annoying, but you can simply share the grace and the truth of God's word with humility and with kindness and with love. How do we do it? How do we keep Christ in our crisis, in our chaos? Stay focused, or for some, refocus on the word of God. Well, let's finish up quickly today. So how do we do it? How do we keep Christ in the midst of our chaos, in the midst of our chaos? How do we, how do we not set God aside? Well, there's some things that we need to do. Number three, we need to share in the work of the Lord. It's easy for us to turn inward right now. It's easy for us to go into a self-preservation mode. I mean, listen, you, you see it all the time at Walmart. I was down there just the other day, and, and everybody's kind of in that self-preservation mode, getting what they need and taking care of themselves. That is the last thing the early church did, and that is the last thing you and I need to do as followers of Jesus Christ. We must not turn inward now. We must keep our focus on the world and our community around us. And so let me encourage you to share in the work of the Lord. Verse six, the Bible says this crowds listened intently to Philip because they were able to hear his message. They loved to hear what he was saying, but, but notice this and see the miraculous signs he did. Many evil spirits were cast out screaming as they left the victims. And I love this. And many who had been paralyzed were, uh, were healed. Listen, not only did Philip share the word of God, but he showed the love of God. And that's exactly what you and I need to continue doing during this time. Emmanuel is and will continue to do this. Listen, these are some of the things we're doing. We're not bragging on the church. We're just bragging on God. We are checking in on neighbors. We're checking in on seniors. We're, we're reaching out to single moms to make sure they're okay. We're writing encouraging notes to first responders. We put together over 600 encouragement bags and, and ask for PPE so that we can send down to the hospital. We're calling families with children to make sure that they're doing okay. We're having local food drives so that we can support our food pantry. I mean, even last night, we had about 200 people go past our house 
beeping and honking and holding up signs uh, telling Lisa and me that, uh, that we were missed and loved. And we were overwhelmed and overjoyed, so much so that two of our neighbors called the police. Now, that's a party at the pastor's house when the police are called. Listen, what an incredible time. But this is what I love most about the drive-by. It wasn't just to encourage us. It was used as a food drive. So at the end of the road, when cars were passing to go home, they were dropping off their supplies so that we can take, so that we can share with others. That is exactly what Emmanuel is all about. We're doing drive-by visitations. We're sending cards. We're making calls. We're conducting online worship services. We have Zoom connection groups. Our Celebrate Recovery is alive and well, reaching out every Friday night through Zoom meetings. We're offering Zoom youth group meetings. We're, we're praying. We have prayer groups that meet at 12 and 6 on the phone every single day. We have online Envision Kids and Embark Ministry resources. We have a support group now for anxiety. We have our marriage ministry up and running. It's amazing what they're doing. Our MOPS ministry are reaching out to moms. And our seniors, adults, our sales are reaching out to seniors. Listen, on and on it goes. Our deacons are being assigned to, to care for those who are under quarantine or perhaps diagnosed with the virus. Our elders continue to provide high-level leadership and are monitoring everything that we're doing so that we can be strong and healthy and effective in what we're doing. And listen to this. You'll love this. We are probably within days now of signing our contract for our site plan. Listen, our buildings have not been shelved. They have not been set aside. We are still working hard, and our elders are doing an amazing job. Listen, we are doing anything and everything we can to show and to share the love of Christ. And I like this. As a result of what Philip not only said, but what he did, it brought the city great joy. Look at verse 8. So the result of what Philip did and what Philip said, the Bible says, there was great joy in the city. Do you want to know how to focus? Do you want to know how to stay focused? Do you want to know how to keep Christ in the midst of your chaos and your crisis? Well, number one, see every obstacle as an opportunity. Number two, stay focused on the word of God. And number three, share in the work of the Lord. Listen, we must not, we cannot abandon our spirit of service now. Jesus, the Bible says, did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Listen, service and sacrifice is how Emmanuel rolls. And your service and your sacrifice around the corner and around the world is needed more now than ever before. Listen to this. By doing so, by sharing in the work of the Lord, by staying focused on the word of God, and by uh, maintaining our relationship with God in such a way that we see this obstacle as an opportunity for God to work in us and through us and around us and even in spite of us, if we do these things, don't be surprised if you bring others joy. And in the meantime, if you're not careful, you might find a little joy just for yourself. Listen, Emmanuel, this is not going to last forever. This is not the end. God is at work, and he wants to use us in an amazing way. Would you join me in prayer? Father God, we are so thankful today. Lord, thank you that these crazy obstacles and challenges and crisis and chaos and confusion and fear, Father, are not too big for you. God, you can, you can use this season in our life, Lord, to do amazing things. This is an opportunity, God, for you to work in us, through us and around us like we have never imagined. And so, God, today we're not going to focus on the chaos, we're going to keep our eyes on Christ. Father, that's our desire. God, it is our desire to stay focused in the Word of God, Lord. Not to abandon the habits that help us grow spiritually to stay connected to you. So, so my friend, if you're sitting there today and you feel disconnected from God and you are a follower of Jesus Christ, revisit those habits that once helped you connect with God. Get back to those things. Don't let this chaos and crisis separate you from the Lord and sweet fellowship with him. In the quietness of this moment, if you are a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, would, would you begin to pray 
Say, Lord, help me to see this situation, these obstacles as an opportunity. God, would you help me to refocus on the word of God? God, would you allow me to, to make sure that I'm, I'm sharing in the work of the Lord? My service and my sacrifice are needed now more than ever before. It is not time, my friend, to turn inward. It is not time to give up your spirit of service and sacrifice. That's not what Emmanuel does. That's not what Emmanuel is about. It's always about the world. It's always about the community. It's always about others. And it's never, ever about ourselves. So right now, would you just begin to pray? And my friend, if you are watching and participating in the service today, and you've never made a first-time commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ, I can't think of a better day than today. I can't think of a better time than right now to give your life to Christ by faith. You know you're empty. You know you're lost. You know the answer is Jesus. Say yes to him today. Let me help you. Father God, today the best way I know how, I give my life to you. God, I don't fully understand all that I'm praying, but God, I know that I need your son Jesus. And God, right now, I, I, I'm asking Christ to come into my life. I, I'm asking you, God, to forgive me of all of my sins, all the mess ups, everything that I've done wrong in the past. God, would you forgive me of all of that? Lord, would you give me a second chance, a do-over, a mulligan, God, in life? Let me try again, Lord. Let me be new and fresh and alive. God, I feel so empty inside, but right now, God, I want you to fill me. And so I surrender my life to you. And God, I'm asking asking you to be my God and I'll be your follower and I pray this with faith in you Father God we thank you and praise you for these moments together and thank you God for loving us even still we pray with thanksgiving in Jesus name Amen Hey, Emmanuel, before we finish up today, I want to thank you again for your faithful support and tithes and offerings. We are doing well. Our elders are overseeing the budget, and they're doing an amazing job. We're doing ministry at a high level. As you continue to give so faithfully, I am absolutely amazed. You can go online at emmanuelchurch.tv, and you can find ways to give. And so uh, go ahead and take a look at that and continue your faithful support. Because of your faithfulness, we are able to reach around the corner and around the world. Listen. This is an empty building today, but we're going to be back together soon. It was so good to see many of you last night, especially our little ones. I miss the Envision kids, and so it was great to see your smiling faces uh, in your cars, but I can't wait to see you here. I can't wait to give you a hug. We miss you. We're going to be back together very, very soon. Emmanuel, we're in this together.
into somebody. These days are not perfect right now. Matter of fact, these days for some people are the hardest times they could ever imagine in their life. But as you walk into the store with your mask on and face covered up, they'll see the smile on your eyes if you smile at them. They might not see your smile, but they'll see the smile on your eyes. They'll see the smile on your heart if you say, hi, how are you doing? Thank you to the clerk. Have a great day as you walk out. So I'm going to ask you, Emmanuel, in our community, as you go out there this week, speak life through your eyes, through your words, through your gestures, grabbing somebody's card for them. Emmanuel, these times, life ain't perfect, but that's when we need to, and let's say it together, go be the church. God bless you. <laughs>